Hi, my name is Gail, and today I'm excited to be bringing you a new tool from Studio 180 Design, the Star 60. The Star 60 is a 60 degree wedge tool that can be used in your 60 degree triangle patchwork. It has all of the great features that we've come to expect and have learned to love from Studio 180 Design. One of the features is that it offers 17 different size options for the Star 60 tool. The units that you create are slightly oversized and then you trim them to perfection for better accuracy. The fine lines on the tool offer you greater precision. The well-written instructions that come with each of their tools give you tables with the cutting requirements for the different units that you're going to make and also offer both right and left-handed instructions. The Instructions for the Star 60 tool are written in the same size as this piece of cardboard that it's mounted on, and that would be kind of cumbersome to carry around with you. So Studio 180 has thought of a solution for that as well. If you go to their website, Studio 180 Design, and you shop by tool, so you would go to the Star 60 tool, down one side you will find a link where you can download the instructions for the tool. Then you can either save them to your computer and or print them off on paper that's eight and a half by 11 and then you can put them into a binder or something. So it's very convenient. So the Star 60 tool, let's go over it a bit. Now I would just like to go over the tool a little bit. The tool has a tip and it has a base. These diagonal lines that you see running to the center of the tool, these are the diamond point guidelines that are used for cutting and trimming the diamonds. The horizontal lines that you see and the vertical lines, those are used for creating some additional shapes such as half hexagons, whole hexagons, and the side triangles that we would use to make the hexagon unit square. These numbers, that are on the edges of the tool, they are associated with the horizontal guidelines. On the base of the tool, you will see two dotted lines. Those are the flat edge trim lines. Those are used to trim the third edge of the star. Now, the basic shape of the star 60 unit is made up of a diamond, and two small triangles, diamond and two small triangles. The finished size of the unit for a star 60 is calculated by measuring from the tip to the other tip of the diamond once your sewing and your trimming have been completed. So in this case, you can see that the finished size of my unit is three and a half inches. That's for a half of a hexagon. If you were doing the whole entire hexagon, so it would be three and a half plus three and a half for a seven inch finished hexagon unit. Now let's talk about how we cut the pieces for our star 60 unit. The first thing I'd like to demonstrate is how to cut the diamonds. So to start with, you're going to take your star 60 tool and you could put any one of the horizontal lines along the bottom of the uh, strip of fabric and what you're going to do is cut along the edge and this is going to establish your 60 degree angle for your cutting. So now that I have my 60 degree angle established, my unit that I'm making is three and a half inches finished, so the cutting instructions told me that my strip had to be two and a half inches. For the two and a half inch strip, if you just finished looking across the table, it would tell me that the guidelines that I need to use on my tool for cutting my diamonds are the four and a half inch guidelines. Another way that you can figure this out is, 
If you know that your finished unit is going to be three and a half inches, you would just add one inch to that. Three and a half plus one is four and a half, which again tells me that I would use the four and a half inch guidelines to cut my diamonds. Now I'm just going to use the dotted lines that denote the four and a half inches. I'm going to put that on my fabric and I'm going to make the first cut. There we go. I have one of my diamonds cut. I would just continue on down my length of fabric, cutting as many diamonds as I needed. You don't need to just do one layer of fabric at a time. You could stack two, three, maybe up to four layers if you're comfortable cutting that much. It tells you in the instructions that you should be cutting your diamonds with your fabric all facing one direction. You don't really have to. It would be okay to have it folded together when you're cutting it. But the benefit of cutting it with your fabric all in one direction is one of your edges is on the straight of grain and one is a bias edge. Cutting them all in exactly the same way will ensure that you always have a straight of grain, a bias edge, a straight of grain, a bias edge. That way when you sew them together, you always have a straight of grain with a bias edge and it will provide you with more stability in your block. The next thing that I would like to demonstrate is how to cut the side triangles. So for the size of unit that I'm doing, I was instructed to cut my fabric two and three quarter inches in width. So I am going to take my star 60 tool, I am going to put the two and three quarter inch line along the bottom of my fabric. The little tip of the tool is going to be extending up past the fabric and I'm going to cut up one side and down the next. And there I have two of my little side triangles. To cut the next one, I'm just going to rotate the tool. Once again, I'm going to line up the two and three quarter inch line along the bottom of my fabric, and I'm going to line this edge of the tool up with the edge that I just cut. And I'm going to make another cut, and there I have two more of my side triangles. I would continue down my strip this way rotating the tool each time. I have one strip folded in half to do this just for demonstration purposes here, but when I'm cutting a bunch of them, I lay all of them just as I did with my diamond strips. I put all of them facing up in one direction. The benefit of doing that too is I'm using a white fabric that has a tone-on-tone -tone design on it. If I cut all of my side triangles with my fabric right side up, then as I'm stacking them, I know that every one of these is already right side up when I'm going to sew. Now we're going to build our star 60 unit. So there is a diamond and then our two side triangles. And if anybody has taken any of my Tucker U classes in the past, you will know that this is the part where I say, and I can hear you saying it with me, organize, organize, organize. So you need to lay out your diamonds with a side triangle on each side with the blunt tip facing down. Then it's time to put them together. So you will take the side triangle on the right hand side fold it right sides together to your diamond and look at how nicely those match up with that blunt end. Then when you take it to the machine to sew, you are going to sew with the diamond on top. The reason that we do that is it allows us to more accurately get our quarter inch. If the little white piece underneath happens to slip a little bit, we will be watching the edge of the diamond up here to know that we are sewing with a good quarter of an inch. So that improves our accuracy. So once we've sewn that unit, that's what it's gonna look like. 
Then we're going to take it to the iron and we are going to press it with the uh, seam going towards the diamond. Then it's time to put the other one on. So once again, you're going to be putting it right sides together. That little blunt tip is going to match up beautifully again. You're going to be sewing it from the side of the diamond and you are going to end up with your star 60 unit. Now it's time to trim this unit. To trim the star 60 unit, if you're right-handed, it works good to position the unit so that the tip of the diamond is pointing at approximately the two o'clock position. That allows you to cut up one side and then down the other quite easily. If you're left-handed, you'll point the tip of your diamond to approximately the 10 o'clock position, which will then allow you to cut up one side and down the other quite easily. We have to now trim this point because once we start sewing them together, we're not gonna be able to get at this again. We're not worried about the outer edges, we're worried about getting the diamond to the correct size. So for the size of unit that I am doing, I am doing a three and a half inch finished diamond. So I am going to line up the three and a half inch dotted lines going down the seam lines of my star 60 unit. I will trim one side and then I will trim the other. Now my diamond is trimmed to the perfect size for my star 60 unit. Once you have all of your diamonds trimmed to the correct size, it's time to start forming half hexagons. So you will take, in my case, a dark colored star 60 unit, and to one side of it, I will sew a lighter colored star 60 unit. Then I'm going to press my seams open when it comes to this part. When I pressed my seams before, first towards the diamond and then out towards the little triangle, when I sew these two units together now, it's allowing my seams to nest right here so I get beautiful matches every time. Remember, nesting your seams is great. You want to be a happy nester and not an not unhappy non-nester. So those two together, press your seam open and then sew one to this side. Once you have that done, then it's time to trim this half hexagon. To do that, you start with your diamond in the center pointing away from you. And I am going to take my star 60 tool and I am making seven inch hexagons when this is all said and done. Remember, three and a half plus three and a half on the other side would give me my seven. So I am putting the solid line for the seven inch diamond on my two seam lines. And the center line should go through the tip of my diamond. Then I am going to just trim and this solid, before I trim, I'll just show you this solid line here will give you your quarter inch seam for when you're sewing this unit to another. Now I'm just going to trim the one side and then I'm going to trim the other side. Sometimes there are reasons you wouldn't trim this yet. I'm going to trim this part now, so you're going to turn it so the diamond, in my case because I'm a right-handed cutter, is facing towards the right. This is where I use the base of the tool and the flat edge trim line. So these dotted lines for the flat edge trim line are going to go along my seam line. These horizontal lines will go along that seam line and you should have a line that basically lines up at the bottom as well. Once you've got that all nicely lined up, then you're just going to trim across the top. And once again, you can see from the solid line to the end 
That's leaving me my quarter inch seam. While I have it like this, I always turn it around and I just use the base of my tool and I trim off that tiny little dog ear because when I go to stick my blocks together, I don't want that there getting in the way. So now I have two units that are ready to become my full hexagon. Coffee time. When we are making star 60 units, sometimes we want to take the unit and we want to square it off. In order to do that, we're going to need little side triangles. So these little side triangles, you get the cutting instructions from your instruction sheet with the tool, and it'll tell you that you are going to put the solid line going down the center of the tool with the cut edge of a rectangle of fabric. I have two stacked here together. You have to put these either wrong sides together or right sides together because for this part it's very important that you get mirror images. So I'm lining that the center vertical line of the tool with the cut edge of my rectangles and the bottom edge with the half inch line at the top. And I'm going to cut that. And what that gives me now is two pairs of side triangles. And these side triangles are mirror images. So when I open them up, I can put one at either side of a star 60 unit to square it off. So I could have, instead of making a great big quilt or something, if I wanted to make this into a table runner or something like that, I can easily do so just by squaring it off like that. So those are the little side triangles. As well, you can cut half hexagons with your star 60 tool. And to do that, you would get the cutting measurements from the instructions with the tool. So for my intents and purposes, for my project, I need to start off with a four and a half inch width of fabric. So I am going to take my tool, my finished units once again were three and a half inches, so three and a half and three and a half is seven inches finished. Seven inches finished is seven and a half inches unfinished. So I will take the seven and a half inch line of my tool. I have my fabric folded in half, so I have two layers here. I'm putting the seven and a half inch line of my tool along the bottom of my fabric. I'm going to cut up one side and then the other side. And there you have it. I now have two half hexagons. So these are used in a quilt that I'm making. You can also cut full hexagons using the star 60 tool, basically following the same method. You would have a piece of fabric that's folded in half, so your fabric would have been nine inches wide, folded in half to give you the four and a half inch. You would place your tool on top, trim your two sides, and then when you opened it up, you would have a full hexagon from one piece of fabric where all six of your sides are all equal. As a convenience, we are going to link Deb's excellent instructional video for the Star 60 tool to our website. I encourage you to have a look at it because it's really, really good. So I'd just like to recap, the Star 60 is a really great tool. There's 17 different size options that come with the tool. The units that you make will be slightly oversized and you'll have the ability to trim them to perfection so that your quilting is better and accurate. The fine lines that are on the tool will give you higher precision. And when I was using this tool, it reminded me an awful lot of making Lemoyne stars. So if you have made Lemoyne stars with me in the past and it's something that you enjoyed, I highly encourage you to have a look at the Star 60 tool because it is a lot of fun to work with. I realize that sometimes when you purchase a new tool and you're going to learn to use it, that that can be kind of daunting and that you would like a little bit more instruction on using it. 
So with that in mind, I have decided to offer a class on the Tulip Trails Quilt by Studio 180 Design. This quilt is constructed entirely using the Star 60 tool. All these colorful hexagons that you see here on the table and the examples that I was doing today for cutting are all part of the process for my quilt that I'm making. This one was on my to-do list, so I was very excited that I could have the opportunity to show you this tool today and that I would be able to work on this quilt. So yes, this is going to be a class and you can register for it anytime after Schoolhouse. There will be an orientation, orientation and a shopping evening on Tuesday, May the 25th from 6 to 9. That's the Tuesday right after the long weekend. It'll be followed by two classes on Monday, May the 31st, and two weeks later on Monday, June the 14th from 6 till 9. So I really hope that you'd like to join me in Make This Quilt and learn how to use a new tool. Thank you very much for watching. Happy sewing.